welcome to Sitcom Showdown, a podcast that reviews classic sitcom episodes and inducts them into our very own Hall of Fame. As usual, one of us has chosen a sitcom episode and the other guy has no idea what it's going to be. Will they already know it? Will they love it? Can they be convinced that it's worthy? Let's find out on the Sitcom Showdown. Welcome listeners, it's great to have you with us. I'm Steve and Jeff's here with me. Yes. He won the the toss of the USB to see who was going to be going first today. So, Jeff, what have you got for us? All right. Uh, I know you'll be pleased, Steve. Um, this week, I have got Married with Children. Ooh. Predictably enough. Uh, it's a show that I love, and I've picked an episode. Uh, it's called The Gas Station Show, which is a bit of an uninspiring title for the episode. But uh, as with every sitcom, your favourite episodes, you might call it something else. So we call it Bundy Sunday Fun Day. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I can't recall that one off the top of my head. No, no. It's like a goodies episode that's called Invasion of the Moon Creatures, but we just call it Big Bunny, and it actually tells you what the show is about. So, mm. Bundy Sunday Fun Day. Um, so, I should launch into telling you about Married with Children. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so, Married with Children ran for 11 seasons. Um, it is a lot. 259 episodes. That's roughly, what, 22 yeah, per season, yeah like anywhere that. from 22 to 28, something like that, depending yeah. on what they're doing that season and I guess how far the budget goes. Uh, anyhow, Married with Children. So if you're not aware of it, it sort of centers around Al Bundy and Al Bundy's a 40-something guy and he's got his wife and his two teenage kids. And he lives in Chicago. He works at a woman's shoe store and this is a job that he got as an 18-year-old out of yeah. high school just for the summer minimum wage job but here he is 20 odd years later and he's still working there yeah so he's his wife peggy she's this lazy couch surfer and she's always trying to get some loving from al which is one of the cliches of married with children and yet at the same time in trying to get some loving from al she's never very nice to him and he's always hanging crap yeah. on him and making his life miserable so yeah and he, he's got these two kids and whatever faults they have it's his fault basically for bringing up bringing them up the way they are. So you've got the older daughter, Kelly, who is the textbook definition of a bimbo, mm. and Bud, who's smarter, but unlike his father, he's not a big strapping lad. He's sort of a, a small dweebier lad, and he's, you know, a sex-obsessed. You don't know if that's because it's just Bud's personality or if it's because he's a teenage boy, but either way, he never has any luck with the women, and that's probably due, down to some of the attitudes he's got about women. Which we can guess where they came from is mum and dad, which and they're not good role models. This is the whole point of the show. But he's quite he got all the smarts. Oh, totally. Is that right? Yeah, he completely did. You know, Dean's list in college are always very academically good. And Kelly apparently, um, you know, several seasons in, there's an episode that flashes back to their past. And Kelly was dropped on her head as a child and she was quite huh. bright before that. And uh that's what happened to her. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Oh dear. So I was going to say, um, if the internet had been invented when Married with Children was on, Peg would be an absolute nightmare. Oh, crikey, yes. Imagine her home shopping wouldn't was, just be on TV, it'd be, oh. it'd be Amazon. Yeah. The whole lot. Dear, oh dear. Uh, that's been part of the fun of watching it. When I was going to pick an episode for this podcast, obviously I've got a hell of a lot to choose from. Yeah. And I've, I've got to say, Steve, I've had the best week ever just watching all these Married with Children episodes. And I've got all the DVDs except for the first five seasons. And there's episodes you and I have discussed privately before that I haven't got that would have been perfect selections, but they're on the season five disc, which I don't have. Oh. So I've foregone those. Uh, can you guess for what birthday, they are? For future birthday presents. Yeah, if you, no, well, I've already ordered it on eBay, but I'm not going to wait. Okay. So pick a couple of Married with Children episodes that you come to mind. Oh. For me, they'd all be probably from the first three or four seasons. Yeah. Uh, the Aliens. Bang on, yeah, that's where in they series steal five. our socks. The alien <laughs> moon men they, stole my socks. Do they fuel his spaceship? <laughs> they fuel their spaceship with his socks. Classic. No one else can see them apart from our. <laughs> so we've got that um, from season five of the Moon Men Stole My Socks episode and also the one where he has to start a vegetable garden because he has a mental breakdown. And that's got one of the greatest scenes of all time where Al starts singing about his vegetable garden and he's singing it to what I think is the Bonanza 
theme tune. He's going dun 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 vegetable garden, dun 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 corn, and he's just singing about I'm going to grow tomatoes and potatoes and pizza with extra cheese and fish. These little fish, I like those. And he's just gone completely off the rails. Yeah. Uh, so getting back to the original point, I don't have that disc, but I've had a, a brilliant week because in going through all the DVDs, which I just bought and put away. You hadn't watched them? I hadn't watched most of them because I spent my youth what? just watching endless reruns of Married with Children because I used to record every episode on VHS. And so I found three or four episodes I'd never seen before. So that was really good. So well, I've enjoyed that this week. So you're saying you've now watched all... What was it, 259? 259? No, well, I reckon when if I was to buy the first five discs, there'd be episodes on there I also haven't seen. Anyway, needless to say, the interesting thing about Married to Children, because it started in 1987, uh, because one of the points we bring up is which network it's on. It's on Fox. Um, And at the beginning of Married with Children, this was only six months into Fox's existence. So Fox fired up in October 86. And then they came out with Married with Children in April 87. And their whole selling point and spin on it was that they put on something that had never been on television before, which is this uh, absolute loser family of horrible people. And what happens and, you know, that might connect with people a little bit more than if you look at the time, you know, you've got all the upper middle class perfect families like The Cosby Show, Family Ties all these sorts of things. And this is a reaction against all of that. And so that's what built it up and, and made it so successful is because people were really enjoying, uh, well, I was about to say a bit of a reality, but that's not really what's going on there. Well, would you say but, it got more bizarre as the years went on? Totally. So um, what I like to call the Jefferson era, because Al also has neighbours. Uh, this is Marcy, uh, and she was married to Steve. So it started out with their neighbours, Marcy and Steve, who are these clean-cut conservative people next door, and the Bundys are making their lives a misery. Mm. But then Steve runs off in probably Series 4, and then there's a season where Marcy's single and then Jefferson comes in. Uh, that's the, the difficulty with the format that we're doing here, Steve, is that we're throwing a lot of names at the listeners and a lot of dates, these sorts of things. It's hard to remember. So the, in a nutshell, you've got the Bundys and the adventures they get up to. But next up, I suppose, is the, the famous stars and other interesting background. Mm. Uh, do you know the names of any there's, of the cast? Um... <laughs> No. Ed O'Neill. Yes. He's Al Bundy. Mm hmm. And I should know that because I watched a very interesting documentary about Al, sorry, Ed, not that long ago. Oh. Talked about his career leading up to Married with Children, the time Married with Children, and then following that because he's got a very long career. It was most recently. Oh, yeah, Modern Family. Modern Family. Uh, yeah, that's, I don't know, that must be in its seventh season by now, surely, and that's going big guns. I mean, more people now would probably know him for Modern Family than Married with Children, oh, or at least equally, because, well, you know, there's a lot of young people watching that show who weren't around 25 years ago when the episode that I've chosen was made. Yeah, he's a very funny guy. He is, and he's brilliant throughout the whole run of Married with Children. I've never seen him put in a bad performance, much less a badly delivered line, because you've got the the other actors, you know, they're all great actors, which I know is a blanket statement, but you, know, you get the occasional clumsily delivered line that's not very convincing from the other members of the cast, but Ed O'Neill mm. never seems to put a foot wrong. And whatever he's asked to do by these ridiculous scripts, <laughs> yeah, yeah. he always just throws himself completely into it. I was watching it during the week and just saying to Jane, I was saying, you know, he's basically the Will Ferrell before Will Ferrell was around, Mm. meaning that no matter what humiliating thing you ask him to do, he'll always put 200% into it and completely sell it in a way that only Will Ferrell can, and that's what Ed O'Neill does as Al Bundy. Um, Anyway, moving through, uh, you've got Katie Segal as Peggy Bundy, Brilliant actress, and she's um, massively famous now as, oh, through her Sons of Anarchy role, and she's great at drama, yes. and also as Leela in Futurama, of course. Oh. She does the voice for Leela, the one-eyed alien in Futurama. So she's gone on to massive success, and she's done a whole bunch of other stuff. I don't know, Futurama, is that a character that uh, well, is part of the main Oh, yeah, it's, you know, she's pretty character. much the main character. I mean, people would say Fry is the main character because he's been brought forward into the future and he's from our time. 
but really she is the the only sensible one amongst a, a cast of completely insane people of which Fry is one. So, you know, if she's the Lisa Simpson of the whole deal, but mm. she's super kick-ass and captain of the ship. So there you go. Um, yep, also Christina Applegate, not so much now. Um, his, you know, the Kelly Bundy, the daughter, she went on to uh, a bunch of her own sitcoms yeah. and movies. But that sort of tailed off a, a bit, I guess, in the last 15 years. I don't see her around much in things anymore. No. Um, so they've gone on to have a lot of fame. Um, but also the cast member Jefferson, Ted McGinley, of course, who was in Happy Days. He was in The Love Boat. He was, oh, Happy Days? Yeah, he was in Happy Days for four years. Whoa, what, yeah. was, the, what, what uh, was the role there? I can't remember the role, but he was a nephew of um, the Cunninghams. Okay. And he was brought in and he's a bit of a, you know, pretty boy college dude. And, of course, then he played that sort of role in Revenge of the Nerds as the main bad guy, pretty boy jock Ah. college dude. And this is all before Married with Children. And he was in Dynasty for 30-odd episodes as well. I was going to ask if he was in soap operas or anything like that because he's got got the looks for that sort of role. Yeah. And so... This is what happens, and so he's brought into Married with Children, and I don't know how many years he did that for. I'm going to guess seven years, and kickstarted a, a brilliant dynasty of great episodes. Was it the character though that? Made oh the yeah, he's a much it... better character because Steve was a bit of a prissy accountanty, you know, Jefferson dull sort indulged of dude. our law, egged him on a bit. Oh totally, and he's just a very shady character. And you can do a lot more with the character of Jefferson than you ever could with the character of Steve. Oh, yeah. So at this point, we've probably talked more than the the length of the episode we're talking about, and we haven't even got into that episode. Well, the next question is, have you watched Married with Children, Steve? And we already know the answer to that question. Like I said, just the first few seasons, I think. Yeah. (laughs) I showed them the episode at Christmas time. I showed them the Christmas episode where Al's been saving up money. Yeah. In the Christmas fund, and he breaks the news to the family that they're actually going to have presents this year. I think it's the best thing since sliced bread. And, of course, he goes to get the money out. And the bank, which is a bank where... Marcy works. Marcy works, is closed early, and they're all inside having their Christmas party, getting hammered. And he's watching as the door, not the screen, to the bank. Winds down, winds down in front of his oh, eyes, no. and he's just thinking to himself, "They're gonna kill me." Well, he's built up the hype to the family. This year, he's, you're getting presents. That's it, and he's cashless. Yeah, he's well, how it. does he get out of that? Well, his brilliant plan is to. Well, it wasn't really his plan, but some uh, he goes back to the shop, and some lady makes this throwaway comment about how she'd like to get rid of her child for half an hour so she could go and finish the Christmas shopping in peace. So he decides to set up Uncle Al's tots, tot caring or something like that. And uh, he's got more tied up with tinsel. And he's <laughs> he goes on to tell them the story about how the red-headed Grinch stole Uncle Al's life. <laughs> Peggy's yeah. a redhead, just for the record. Yeah. So he's talking about it Peggy. It goes on from there. And uh, yeah, the kids didn't know what to make of this, <laughs> this show. <laughs> I was laughing. Okay, we're going to go away, watch this episode of Married with Children, and we'll be back to you shortly. Let's go! Families are meant to be together. Well, we don't want to be together. You have no choice. (laughs) I dedicate today as Bundy Sunday Fun Day. And so it ends. <laughs> now, here's the plan. We're going to take a Sunday drive. In the Dodge? <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you now, but I have a special surprise in mind. You got a bumper sticker that says my other car is my feet? <laughs> you used your finger to make a really cool racing stripe in the dirt on the side of the car? <laughs> You got a new eight track of Hotel California? (laughs) We can crank it as we're towed down the freeway. Don't make me kill you on family day. (laughs) Now I say we all put on our finest clothes. We're in them. Pack ourselves some vittles. We have none. And pile in the car for a day of fun, a day of family, a day of love. (laughs) (laughs) 
So we've just got back from watching Married with Children's The Gas Station Show, which is series Indeed. six, episode 23. What did you think, Steve? It was pretty funny. Pretty funny. I can't help feeling sorry for Al. I don't know if I should. Am I supposed to feel sorry for him? Yeah, it's a complicated emotional thing because he's the arch architect of his own misery, obviously, but at the same time, the poor dude. <laughs> All he wants to do is have family fun day. Yep. I mean, he sets the bar pretty low by basically taking them to the full service pump. Although they are excited enough about it. But how is it his fault that they decide they're going to go into the shop and spend $12 on <laughs> plastic sunglasses and packets of chips? You yeah, just tat and rubbish. Oh, dear. And then they double back to seven hours later to <laughs> dish out some more humiliation. Oh. All right, well, let's do a, a quick blow-by-blow -blow account of that. what goes on. Um, so the episode opens and the family has just walked in from being out somewhere and Owl's, they see him sitting there alone on the couch. But Peg can see what's on the TV and she knows it's Shenandoah, which is apparently a Jimmy Stewart classic mm. about a man beating all odds to save his family. So some old Western or something, as you say. And they know what this means is that every time Al watches this, he he gets all inspired and upset and loves his family because he's just seen the heroic Jimmy Stewart doing everything to save his family. So yeah. that's the great thing about this episode is, you know, there's been previously five seasons of Al's family being the cause of his misery and his job and all the other things. Mm. But on this one occasion, within the first 30 seconds, you see Al crying, which never happens, and he's telling his family that he wants to spend time with them and love them. And Peg just sees what's coming and she just goes, oh, God, he's going to want to spend time with us now. I'm sure this has and never happened on. up until this point. Ah, oh, well, you know, it might have happened once or twice. Who knows? Rarely, to be sure. But yeah, rarely. So it's going against expectations of the, the whole series. So that's why this episode sort of sticks out, but also because, you know, it's, it's well written and it takes you through mm. some stuff. And another good thing about this episode, as we'll soon find out, is it takes place outside the house and outside the workplace, so it's not in all the usual sets, which makes it a memorable mm -hmm. one. So anyway, Al's all inspired by watching this, and he calls a family meeting, and they've been trying to sneak past him to, so they can have their Sunday to themselves. But then he announces they're going on, the, on a day of fun and adventure and family love, and uh, he announces it's Bun Bundy Sunday Fun Day, and uh, says, we're all getting in the car, and I've got a big surprise for you. And they're not too happy about this. But anyway, they all get in the car <clears throat> and we cut to the car, the Dodge, which is a big feature of the series because it's terrible. I mean, Al bought this crappy second-hand car when he was in high school and yeah. he's still got the same car. It's getting pushed Same again. job, same car. Yeah, and so they're pushing it into the petrol station because they've run out of gas. Oh, dear. And there's some brilliant gags there, which we won't go into the minutiae of because, you know, it takes too long to set up. But I, but he I won't saw let that spoil his cacking yourself. He won't spoil, let that spoil no. family fun day, though. No way. Because water off a duck's back. <laughs> no, that's right. Because he's given them the surprise, which they don't yet notice. So he's pulled into the full service lane. And for the first time, they're not living like paupers pumping their own gas. They get an attendant to pump their gas for them. <laughs> And Peggy's so impressed by this, and it's obviously never happened before. And, you know, they're finally feeling like rich people because they've got someone to pump their gas for them. Oh, well, I feel like a princess. Yeah, and then blows her nose on his sleeve. And then, oh, ah, yeah. far out. And the family are so happy. And Al's, who's the king of surprises? Daddy! And they're all cheering him and stuff just because he's pulled into full service. He's going to hunt the horn. Yeah. <laughs> to get the hint, attendant out. Yeah. We'll let the boy do it. So anyway, they pulled into full service and the family are really happy. And so they obnoxiously honk the horn to get the attendant out to do all the stuff. And Al says, I'll have $2 worth of regular, please. And that's a brilliant sight gag where the attendant just yep. picks up the nozzle, wipes his finger on the end of it and flicks it into the gas tank. <laughs> but to do that, he has to take the rag out of the gas tank hole, which is Al's petrol cap. So he's just got this rag... <laughs> Oh. Al doesn't even question it. No. <laughs> no. And then, you know, he, they've got their uh, range of free services for pulling into full service, and so he gets the guy to check under the hood and do all these sorts of things. So he lifts up the hood and it slides straight off and <laughs> gets thrown to the side. Which never gets put back on. No. 
It doesn't, does it? Ah. Oh. Anyway, so there's a, a bunch of jokes where mm. basically this guy is pointing out how crap Al's car is and all these horrible things that are wrong with it. And uh, then he lets Bud order the guy around and Bud, you know, obviously has learnt from his father and says, all right, Goober, if you check the tyres, there might be a shiny nickel in it for you. And Al goes, what are you do? I don't have a nickel. Yeah. Uh, he barely has two dollars. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Anyway, so the family goes off to laugh at other people who have to pump their own gas now that they're all highfalutin. Yeah. yeah. And Al's just talking to the, the attendant named Joe. Anyway, uh, he goes, right, well, that's the lot. And then so Al pays him his two dollars and gives him, starts giving it to him in nickels and then, you know, dimes and then pennies. And he's just mm. counting out 121, 122, and <laughs> paying him in all this change. Oh, dear. And so you'd think, right, they can head off now, but then Al spots the family all walking out of the petrol station with their tat, as yep. you mentioned yep. before. And Peggy goes, the guy inside wants $12 for all this stuff. Al's just like, I don't have $12. And so here we get to the plot point, which is that Al now has to work off this $12 by working as the gas station attendant. And you know joe zips off to the beach and then so this is basically justice coming back to haunt al after him and his family giving the, the poor attendant hell al's now in the same position yep. ah yep. yeah classic um so peg and kelly and bud nick off to presumably go home and try and find some money from somewhere to come back and bail out well, the situation. So. yeah well they promised to do that they did yeah because mm. kelly says don't worry, Daddy, we'll go straight home and try and raise the money to get you out of this financial fox paws. <laughs> ah, I remember it now. Yes. Ah, oh, because she, she doesn't know how to say faux pas. No. Um, but Al doesn't like French anyway, so that's all right. Ah. Oh. Yeah, anyway, so basically what follows from there until the end of the episode, it's all set in the gas station, and of course, you know, Al's humiliated by having to work off his debt, so naturally the first thing that happens is Marcy and Jefferson pull in in their brand new BMW and proceed to give him hell. Yeah, because he's telling himself, it's not so bad, it's not like <laughs> anyone I know is going to be pulling into this service station that's not in our neighbourhood. Oh. And I was just thinking to myself, yep, cue, <laughs> cue Marcy to arrive. Oh dear. And so anyway, they go through their series of jokes where they're just hassling him and, and making fun of him. And Al's making it worse for himself. And then they drive over his foot on the way out. And then his mm -hmm. foot gets driven over by a child on a bicycle. And then one of these perfect families we were talking about earlier, you know, from Family Ties or Cosby Show, you know, he gets this perfect family in that are being so sickeningly nice that makes him sabotage their car. And then they go off and crash and Al's laughing at them. Ah, but then there's a brilliant moment where it's a dialogue-free sort of probably one minute, 30 seconds, where it's just yeah, Al desperately sorry. trying to get himself out of trouble. So as traffic's going by, he's holding up these signs that he scrolled on cardboard with a marker. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's like, you know, high school football stories, $12. And he's just trying to raise $12 somehow. And then after all these signs, and it's just... You know, a whole brilliant sequence. And he ends up holding up a sign. As, as yeah, well. more and more desperate. Holds up a sign that says, shoot me $12, which is just brilliant. And poor Al. And he just carries the whole scene with just facial expressions. And it's, ah. Oh, yeah, it's and great. as the car goes down the street, he's <laughs> shuffling down the driveway, shaking oh. the sign at them. Please. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah, that helps break it up. That's a really good bit. Um, So... Naturally, the family comes back and you think Al's going to be out of trouble, but it turns out that Peggy found 20 bucks in one of Al's shirts and Al hears this news and he's all like, yes, you know, I'm out of trouble. And so what happens is she goes, but we have to spend it on a taxi because your car ran out of gas and we've caught the taxi here to get you to fill up this container. Yep. And Al goes, well, fill it yourself. And they go, no, we've walked into full serve. And so that's where it comes full circle. And now Al has to be subjected to what he subjected the other guy to by his own family. And then they, or Al, <laughs> yep. And then they nick off, and Al's still in there in trouble, and he gets Bud to take over from him because he can't believe the family betrayal, and he's sick of what's happening. So he takes off his his Habib shirt, which the petrol station gave him, puts it on Bud, says, "The next car in here is yours." And naturally, a car full of bikini-clad ladies comes in, and they take Bud away to go have fun for the rest of the day. And then the Swedish bikini team, the Swedish bikini like team. Oh, 
And then another car full of ladies turns up and they, they love guys named Al and they're looking for guys named Al. And it's the Chicago bowling team of 50-year-old mm-hmm. ladies. And so he just gives in to fate at that point and hops in the car and they go off into the sunset and that's the end of the episode. What's he say? Let's rock. Yeah, no, like let's that. boogie. Let's boogie. Yeah. There you go. But he looks utterly defeated you know, at this turn of events and he knows that's yes. his luck. Life has run over him. Yeah. Just like it ran the, they've been running over his foot. Oh, yeah. For the past seven hours. Yeah. But Al is always, as I said before, the architect of his own misery. And so there you go. He's not nice to the people he deals with. And so then, you know, when the tables turn, they're not nice to him. But, you know, that's overanalyzing it too much because there's just brilliant moments in there. Of There's some great script moments, but also just, you know, the slapsticky things like the the gas tank bit and the hood coming off and mm-hmm. simple stupid violent stuff like his foot being run over and we get a laugh at that so yeah there's a lot to like in that episode it's it's really good yep yeah i really liked it did you yep all right that we was... don't have a rating system or anything so i can't ask you what no. you'd give it out of 10 but you were about to say something and well, I if, it's not, if it's not five star it doesn't it doesn't get into the hall of fame that's it wow I've put my case. I think it deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. What are your thoughts, Dave? I thought it was brilliant. Did you really? Yep. Oh, hey. Yep, really liked it. Had similar elements to those other episodes that I was talking about where Al tries to do something exciting for the family, like buying the presents. He's trying to do these things to make everyone happy. Yep. Make everyone proud of him and look what happens. <laughs> but I do feel sad for him. Yeah. That's a good Very point good. you've made there because there probably would be one per season of when he, he tries to improve their lot somehow and then finds out that they totally stab him in the back somehow. Yeah. That's well, good because it makes him a more likeable more likeable character when they throw in an episode like that every now and then. Ah, <sighs> And funny when you see it completely fall to pieces. Yeah. So have we got Very anything good. to add about this one? There were a couple of things I wanted to ask you about the ending of the episode. Yep. Which I found a bit odd. First, the twelve dollars, which was it, twelve dollars, which Al owes the service station. Yeah, never gets paid off that I can see. No, by the ladies that rock up. No, the members of the ladies bowling team. Yeah, <laughs> and the um, other thing was, I was expecting it either to be the ultimate low for Al, or for him to fight his way out of it, or for him to redeem the situation somehow to come out on top. Oh, what, but, with the owners of the service station? Or? Well, I'm not exactly sure, but I expected him to either hit his highest high or his lowest low okay. at the very end of the episode. But um, well, explain to me why. I mean, oh, this is like a typical ending to a Married with Children episode, but I don't really get... Like, it seems to me that um, five minutes ago he was ready to be shot for this 12 Yeah, yeah, so the 12 bucks, now I understand. It so was he seems so important to have to landed him. on his feet Yeah, by having these ladies come along. And take him away. away. Um, They seem like the kind of people he'd get along with. Well, quite. Yeah, they could talk bowling if nothing else. So has he landed on his feet or has he gone as low as he can? I I guess he's just reached the point where he's so defeated he's given up altogether. That's what it is. And just, I don't know, that's that's the theory I'm going to roll with, is that he's just said, right, I've tried everything here and nothing's going to work, so I'm just going to give in to what the fates have dictated and go off with the, the Chicago bowling team. Yeah. And also, you know, they ran out of time. We well, you see that in a lot of sitcoms. We should create a new, you know, label it somehow and then take note of how many episodes that happens in. Well, mm. Where they don't where they don't resolve the initial with a thing. neat little bow. Yeah, exactly. Or the very thing that was stressing the main characters out in whatever whatever sitcom it is never gets fixed. But like I was saying even though I've never seen this episode before, this seems like a fairly typical kind of Married with Children ending. It seemed completely in keeping with what I expected. Oh, good. So why is that? Is it that they ran out of time? I don't know. I guess you do the the new age life coach thing and say it's not the destination, it's the journey. And so by setting up that series of events, they can have all the... hit all the points they want comedy-wise, and then, you know, who cares about the ending? Okay. I mean, you could say that's the sign of a weak episode where they can't think their way out of it. I'm not sure. You've exposed a weakness there in, in that episode. But I don't know that... I mean, I don't feel... Like it is a weakness. Well, no, it's to, uh, to me, that is Married with Children. Yeah. Owl's that, is a, that is a Married with Children ending. Yeah. 
typical uh, ending and it didn't didn't lower it no and it's not a life-changing thing because obviously in a sitcom if you've got something let's pick something ridiculously over the top like the characters win lotto or whatever it is obviously you can't you know you have to have everything reset to the beginning at the end of the episode mm. so that life can continue as normal for the next episode but this was twelve dollars yeah <laughs> All he had to do was pay back 12 bucks. This wasn't going to affect the long-running situation yeah, 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 of the yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm probably overthinking it there. But, yeah, you're right. Is that a typical Married with Children ending? Well, I'll watch all 11 seasons again with my notebook. And then I'll make a count of okay. how often they end like Get that right and how often that. they don't. Yeah. Like I say, it didn't affect my enjoyment of the, the episode. But as I was watching it, it just didn't seem quite right. Hang for on a reason. minute. Yeah, hang on. He didn't pay back the $12. No. It was good stuff. Right, well, I'm very pleased with your reaction there, Steve. I honestly am. And I'm, I'm glad that it's successfully gone in in one of these early episodes here. So, uh, yes, yeah, strike one for Married with Children. And I've got a, a hunch it won't be the last Married with Children episode that I put forward. It won't be the last we see of Al Bundy. No way. Well, that's it for this episode then, with all that being said. And uh, we will see you next time for a selection of Steve's Choice. Bye. Catch up. Join us next time on Sitcom Showdown when we'll be putting another five-star episode under the microscope. And in the meantime, you can contact us with feedback on Facebook, Twitter at Sitcom Showdown, or by email at sitcomshowdown at gmail.com.